this exercise is actually really helpful. And what I ask them to do is to sit down and imagine their character is in a room with someone else in the movie that they trust. How much easier is it for the writer if they know from the beginning what the character wants? A million times easier. It's a million times easier if you kind of know what the character wants. But there's always a starting point. You think you know what they want at the beginning and you start writing with that and then it can shift, you know? And so um, I think it's the most important thing. Uh, like I said earlier, you know, when I do consultations with people, it's the singular most popular problem in the script is what do they want? How are they trying to get it? You know, what are they doing to try to get it? How does that make them face something in themselves and how do they grow? And do they finally get this thing or do they get it in a way that they didn't expect? So um, I think I think I always try to start out like what do they want? Because I've learned over the years like I need to know what that is because that's the engine that drives their actions through the story. And when I don't know that and I start to write, I'm just kind of like just driving over here, I'm driving over here, I don't know, you know, it just, it ends up being, I throw out a lot of pages. So I think you can start like, what is their emotional need? You know, do they want love? Do they want revenge? What is it that's driving them? And then what's the specific thing they think is going to get, is going to satisfy that need? And how do they pursue that? And um, you may start with that and you may shift it. You know, as you start to write, you realize, oh, that's not what they want at all. They want this other thing. So then you're going to have to go back and kind of, you know, reverse engineer what you did. But it's okay. That's the process, you know. And a lot of times characters' um, goals shift in the movie. You know, like in Get Out, which is a great movie, you know, Chris, he wants to go impress her family. In the middle of the, in the, middle of the movie, his goal shifts to like, I need to get out of here. They're going to hijack my body and my brain, Right. So, so that, that shifts in, in the story, but, but that's good. That's okay. But he still has a goal throughout that drives him. And you've said before that sometimes when you sit down to write that your character sometimes starts to tell you what they want in a sense. Yeah. I just had an experience with this barf thing that I did, this thing that I just vomited out. Like, I'm just going to write, write, write. And I was just like, I was, I kind of had the plot in my head because again, this side, the left side is so dominant in my brain. And I was just like, okay, this is when this happens. And then suddenly she's in the middle of the scene and like, there's a flashback where somebody's, she's curled up in a ball in the bathroom and someone's throwing movie magazines at her from the 1940s. And I was like, <laughs> then I went back into the scene. I'm like, well, that just happened. I, I don't know what happened to her, but something happened to her. And then I kept writing. And then again, when I went back, that was where all that whole backstory is what the whole thing is really about. Why she's doing what she's doing, what she's going to have to face, you know, in the story. Um, but that was never in my brain that that would ever happen. I would, that there were, that flashback was just going to pop up in the middle of, of my writing. Um, but it was great. It, they, she started talking to me. She started telling me stuff that happened to her. <laughs> and I was like, okay. What if we can't figure out what the character wants? Oh, wow. Yeah. What if you can't figure out what the character wants? Um, again, a very common issue, right? Um, some strategies that you might do to try to figure out what the character wants um, is to figure out um, what they're afraid of. What are they afraid of? Like, what are they scared of? And what do they want? That's in contrast to that. You know, does the, could their want come from wanting the opposite of that fear? Do you know what I mean? If they're afraid, let's say they were um, had a traumatic past or a traumatic childhood, you know, um, could they really want just the perfect family? You know, could you start from fear and generate a want as the opposite of that? Um, that's one way to kind of try to generate some ideas about, you know, what your character could want. Um, one thing that I often do with my clients and my students is um, I have them write a monologue. Um, and monologues in movies are, we're not supposed to write monologues. It's one of the rules. But you know what? This exercise is actually really helpful. And what I ask them to do is to sit down and imagine their character 
is in a room with someone else in the movie that they trust, another character that they trust. And that other character says, what do you want? And this character tells that other character what they want. And I, I ask the writers to use all their five senses to describe this dream that they have and just to allow that character to talk to the writer and describe what they want with no preconceptions. And usually out of, and I say write for five minutes and don't stop. So just stream of consciousness, I want this. And you know, somewhere in there is, the, is a kernel of something that they can actually grab onto and hold on to. So again, giving an invitation to your character to speak to you about what they want. So if they don't know what the character wants, it doesn't necessarily mean they need to abandon it, that that no. character is not really connecting with them. No. Okay. No, it's just that they don't know yet. They have to listen. They aren't listening. They're trying to like put things on the character. You know, if you step into the character and let them talk, they will tell you things, you know? So let them tell someone else in the movie what they want. What are the ways a writer can create stakes for their character? Oh, Great question. So obviously stakes are really important um, for characters because they create suspense and tension around um, the goal, right? So if they don't achieve what they want to achieve, something terrible will happen. They will lose something. Um, there, Linda Seeger wrote this really great book called How to Make a Good Script Great. It's not just for rewriting. You can use it to write a first draft. But she actually has a really great chapter on stakes. And what she came up with is a list of what is a list of stakes for any human being. And I, I'm gonna to try to remember off the top of my head, but it's like survival, love and belonging, security, security, um, uh, the aesthetic, which is a sense of order or control, um, self-actualization, which is um, self-expression. So the loss of any one of these things on this list is devastating for a human, right? Survival, physical survival, oh my God, I'm dead, right? Love and belonging. If we don't have love and belonging, we're basically dead. Safety and security, we also need that. If we don't have it, it's gonna be bad, right? So all of these stakes, um, one way to think about that is to look at her list, and I think it's online somewhere if people wanna check it out. Um, but but look at that list and, and think about it in relation to my character's goal. If they don't, like for example, if I don't make that person love me, what will I lose? Love, you know, which one's on this list am I gonna lose? And if you, if you watch a lot of movies and you think about this and you think about the stakes that the writers have set up for their main characters, usually it's everything on that list except for one or two things. They stack the stakes for the main character. So it's just not love and belonging. It's also safety and security. It's also self-actualization. It's actually, you know, um, maybe later in the movie something happens where now it's survival. I'm going to die. They pile on the stakes. And every good writer has to be able to articulate what the character's going to lose if they don't get what they want. Again, everything is connected to the character and their goal. So if they don't get this thing, what will be lost? And the more you can stack those stakes for your character, the more tension and suspense um, and kind of like we're just going to be like oh no they're not going to if they it's just going to create in the audience this like connection and fear that they're not going to get what they want which is what you want in the story so just like the is it maslow's hierarchy of needs yeah so i think at the at the very bottom of it or Wait, I'm trying to think if I flipped it. So self-actualization, I think, is is the last one. Isn't yes. It? And then survive, safety that, and survival that, yeah. is the top. Okay. And L Linda mm -hmm. Seeger created the screenwriting version of that list. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. so if you took like a Jenga piece, if we take one of those away, then that that's going to raise the stakes no matter what it is. Yeah. The character. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Like, like you know, um, I was thinking about um, the movie Coco, you know, the Pixar movie, Coco uh -huh. about the little kid, Miguel, who has to go to the land of the dead so he can find his ancestor so that he can become a musician, which is what he's meant to be. Right. And I went through um, Linda Seeger's list of all those stakes, you know, um, and he had everything except one. And it, that's just good writing. You know, there, he's not just going to physically possibly die. 
He's going to lose his family. He's going to lose safety. He's going to um, not be who he's meant to be. Like everything. Like this kid, it's going to it's going to be horrible if he doesn't achieve his goal. Um, and so again, the writer has to be able to understand and articulate, you know, what's at stake for the character.